Hi, my name is Stephanie Sager Barrett, and I'm the former curator here at the Mining and Rollo Jameson Museums. And today I'm going to be talking about sewing machines. The history of the sewing machine well, actually dates back into the late uh, 1700s, but uh, the first practical sewing machines could be found uh, starting in the, oh, about in the 1840s. The first sewing machines uh, use what uh, is called a chain stitch, which means that there is one thread and it makes uh, kind of a looping uh, stitch, kind of like a single crochet, if you're familiar with that. And there is no bobbin or lower uh, thread. In, uh, in the machine. The disadvantage of the chain stitch is that it will come undone very easily. Uh, so while it's, it's easy to use, it was not necessarily the best choice for things that needed to have a long life. Starting in the late 1840s and uh, particularly in 1850, the what was called the lock stitch machine was developed. The most famous name that just about everybody is familiar with, at least these days, uh, is Singer. Mr. Isaac Singer developed uh, his machine in 1850. After looking at somebody else's machine and he being an engineer figured, I can do better than that. And so he set out to uh, make improvements on uh, the machine. Uh, he succeeded and went, uh, went into business uh, for himself. Singer ended up being a worldwide company selling millions of sewing machines in virtually every corner of the world. And when the sewing machines first came out, you know, like everything else, they were, they were expensive. Uh, the singer was, he was a smart guy, and he came out, came up, you know, with an installment plan. So that, uh, so that you could make payments over time, because, you know, a hundred dollars in mid-1800s was a lot of money. And so, yes, the, at, at the start, they were not very common. It would, it would have been something that your, your tailor or your seamstress would have been able to justify the expense. But it wasn't until you know, the 1880s and 90s when they really started to become common things that you would find in an ordinary you know, middle class household. Um, of course, too, at the same time, that you know the, the machine was making home sewing easier. It was also making commercial sewing a lot easier and a lot faster. So you know at the same time that sewing at home was becoming easier for the uh, the housewife, uh, we're seeing the um, factoryization. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a real word, but anyway, of uh, of clothing manufacture. And so ready to wear clothing really becomes common, uh, starting out first with men because their clothes are not as complicated to make and their styles don't change as often as, and as drastically as women's styles do. So and the machine that I'm sitting at is a Minnesota and this, uh, this one would have dated a little bit uh, later than this one. This one uh, was probably about eight, you know, in the 1890s uh, or thereabouts. Uh, both of these machines operate, are operated with a foot treadle and um, they you can go forward and back. Uh, no zigzag yet. The, the back and forth pedaling motion of the treadle, that's what feet, that's what that's called. That's why this is called a treadle sewing machine. 
that motion is transferred into the rotary motion by the, uh, the arm that you see down there. And then the rotary motion is transferred via the belt to the machine, or yeah, to the sewing machine. And then that rotary motion gets transferred in the workings here to the vertical motion that makes the needle go up and down. Now, that, that is also powering uh, the bobbin. And unlike the chain stitch machine, this one right here, which only has one thread, this machine uses two. You've got the thread here on the top, and then you've got the thread coming down, uh, coming up through uh, the bottom of the, uh, of the feed plate. And this is what is down below. There's the this is the bobbin that's wound with thread. And then that goes, I believe that they call this a shuttle bobbin because what this does in here is it goes back and forth while the needle goes up and down. And this is what creates that lock stitch as opposed to the, you know, the chain stitch where if you pull the wrong end, it'll just come all undone. This one will not do that. Somewhere down in there, you can see how, how the upper thread has captured that lower thread and that's what that's what is creating your the lock stitch. Uh, sewing was something that took up a lot of a woman's time in uh, in in and amidst of all of her other household chores. Before the uh, advent of the sewing machine, when all the sewing was done by hand. Making of a man's shirt, which is one actually one of the simplest things that uh, could be made, and one of the most common articles of clothing to be made at home, uh, by hand takes about 13 hours to do all of the all of the stitching uh, with a needle and a thread. On a sewing machine, between one and two hours. So uh, it definitely made a difference in the length of time that it took to produce garments. The Minnesota machine that I was, uh, that I was using was owned by a woman here in Platteville. Her name was Flora Ratzel. It uh, was purchased in uh, oh, 1911, 1912 by the Sears and Roebuck catalog and uh, Flora uh, worked as a uh, seamstress here in town.